Welcome to episode 60 of Castles and Cryptids, where the castles are haunted and the cryptids are cryptic as fuck. <laughs> I am still Alana. <laughs> and this one's still Kelsey then. We're still here with you and we're glad if you're still here with us or if you're just joining us. Welcome to the shit show. We made it to 60, yo. <laughs> yo, yo. That's pretty crazy, though. That kind of snuck up on me. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like when we get into the triple digits, I'm going to be floored. I know. Well, because that just happens with your second year. And I'll be like, listen to people. I'll be like, you guys are in your hundreds already? And then I'm like, oh, I guess so. <laughs> Started yeah, a couple that... of years ago. That's the way it goes. <laughs> right? That's what seems crazy is when when we hit like after episode 50 and then it was like wow we have 50 of these and then it's going to be episode 100 it is crazy and it is something to be celebrated i was thinking about how um in one uh podcast group sort of podcast group sort of instagram group we have where when we joined last year for like you know supporting each other on your social medias and just simple stuff like that there's you know just a bunch of podcasts and youtube channels and stuff like that trying to get their way and stuff and there was probably like 10 or 12 people or groups in there and then i was thinking how i was like they're dropping like flies like in the last year i would say two of the podcasts have completely stopped being podcasts and yeah. two of them have are like on like a hiatus or whatever for one reason or another <laughs> you know whether they're busy or like they had issues with their name or whatever um yeah <laughs> yeah and then like <clears throat> i think two of them were like left our group or something and then we got one into our group and it was like yay but i'm still like oh my god it is crazy you know it's still something to be celebrated when you're like okay we're, we're just excited we're on 60 episodes and people listening back might just be like ah, whatever that's not that exciting people have 300 episodes but it, it is exciting mm. when you're producing them <laughs> yeah damn it it is it's oh. it's a lot of work it's like yeah <laughs> and it, i it's don't even an know accomplishment in that way a lot of work a lot of fun but like it's a project. It's a baby. It's something you do. And when yeah. it's out there, it's done. It's like a painting or something. You're like, now that's out there and the world can see it. And I guess the world can have it, but it's still my baby. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so this week I was like, what are we doing? Oh yeah. We're doing, we're doing another one of our haunted AF series. Cause that's what we usually yeah. do refer to them when we do our little haunted dives which are always fun you're obviously yeah. here if you like the paranormal <laughs> i was calling it asylums that are haunted af yes yeah yeah that's similar because we had our objects that were haunted af and that yeah. was fun i like doing that one I like the haunted ones i think people do too we got a pretty good response from our haunted prisons yeah, that's not our best episode, or no, second best. It's one I of mean, our best. It's up there. We have a top five that I am monitoring closely. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's no Japan true crime. We'll say. That's still number one. And then episode number like one is still points. number two. It's at 169. <laughs> so tell your friends, guys. Hear that? We're still not in the hundreds of all our episodes. <laughs> No, we aren't. We don't. We don't want to get annoying, but we do want sponsors. You can just skip through them, like everyone else does. <laughs> <laughs> and we won't do any really annoying ones, like I just went to sleep on my Helix mattress, and then I popped and logged into Better Health before I decided to play Best Fiends. <laughs> oh Although my I, gosh, I do like Best Fiends. I will not lie. I do play that. <laughs> I go through lulls where I don't play anything on my phone. <laughs> yeah, true enough. Sometimes I get more gratification logging onto social media or Anchor to see how many downloads we have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gives you that little shot of adrenaline joy. <laughs> <laughs> little serotonin for you. Yeah, 
Oh, I think I might have had some fun facts for us that I learned on the internet. Um, <laughs> my book might be downstairs, but I'm just trying to remember things I learned. Oh, I did learn that um, there's a department store in the UK, like London, specifically mostly called in the England called Harrods. It's like a department store. Okay. Food, whatever. I'm like, oh yeah, I've been there once when we were there. And um, they were talking about it on a podcast, of course. And <laughs> it was like, oh yeah, do you know they, st they sold um, cocaine up until 1916 <laughs> at oh, the store. <laughs> and that kind of reminded me because we just did our poison crimes, which came out today yeah. as we're recording this. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I was like, damn. And like, yeah, they apparently sold it in these little kits that had cocaine, morphine, and all your little syringes in the little gift pack. So oh, it was lovely. all set to go. I don't know if it had That's... an arsenic tonic or what. But... Just put it all in there. A little bit of cyanide too. So... That'll put hair in your oh. chest. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's terrible. I was a little shocked. <laughs> um, yeah, fun facts. <laughs> yeah, I have so many useless ones. I swear. I don't know. That was just the first yeah. They're one. like in one ear, out the other with me. I yeah. they were somewhere in the back of my brain. I don't recall them until I need <laughs> to. <laughs> oh man, it's so true same when you listen to and talk about so many true crime cases <laughs> like yeah yeah that happened to someone somewhere <laughs> yeah. oh. um do you want to go first this week yeah i can uh i'll go first considering mine's i went first i'm like medium to long um but I That's don't have okay. a lot of information about hauntings, which is kind of sucky. But we could assume oh. it's very fucking haunted. Yeah, <laughs> that could be weird, right? A lot of times you can find a lot of history. Well, that's okay. Yeah. That'll give me time to make sure all my pictures are uploaded to the drive. <laughs> yeah, I do have pictures on the drive. I have pictures ready for the drive, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think. So... Sorry. We're doing some creepy asylums and sanitariums, hospitals, whatever Sanitarium. you want to call it. Sanitarium. I have the Metallica song printed out. <laughs> it's beautiful. I could probably, and I'll, yeah, once we get to my segment, I could probably pay, play like 25 seconds of it or something. We won't get sued. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> What they have beautiful lyrics and it encompasses the bleakness of these places. <laughs> oh yeah. We're There's... we're gonna get to bleak. Bleak as fuck. <laughs> this oh. is so bleak. I almost was like, is this too much? Is this too much history? Should I pick it? And at one point I actually picked a different one. <laughs> really? Started looking up sources and then was like, nah, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna tackle this because this thing needs it's not to be a talk. yeah it's not a sunny topic <laughs> no okay i don't know which one you're covering yeah i only knew which one you were doing uh Surprises. so <laughs> yeah i am talking i believe it's pronounced bethlehem uh it has a bunch of different names that we'll get to oh and yeah, it's extremely is, famous. Oh, is this in the UK? Yeah. <gasps> oh, okay. I tried okay. to intentionally not do an American one. Uh, I, I'm sure I've heard this one if, if it's also pronounced Bedlam. Bed, yes, bed it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. Damn. I'm excited. Yeah, nope, there's no a much. lot. <laughs> I just know I kind won't, of the name. 
yeah, I won't be getting into any of the, the shit about like funding who was other than a couple people who was like working there uh, or anything because it would literally be like uh i think i condensed about almost 70 whole pages of notes uh down to about four plus like a website i have to read an excerpt from so like like meaning 70 pages that you kind of researched from right yeah i was like oh god even i don't get that long-winded where i'm like i wrote 100 pages and then i cut 40. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, it was like okay no, it was just so cool. much that's nice where i was like so nope. much to re pull from yeah yeah <laughs> so Damn. with bethlehem hospital it was originally named this was only really said in one place uh it was originally named the priory of the new order new order of our lady of bethlehem oh okay yeah it's That's very like churchy well that kind of explains a little bit of the, where the name comes from to me that's cool yeah i like that so later as you kind of said it became commonly known as the bedlam asylum damn and it is one of the world's most famous mental hospitals and it actually ended up having four different locations since the very first time it opened all the way up until the fact that it's still running today oh my god a slightly different name really mm -hmm. i don't and... know how to feel about that hopefully it's it's in good condition <laughs> it's a lot better now than it was <laughs> with everything going on but it's still not great we'll get to it briefly mm. So the hospital was founded by the church, hence the Our Lady of Bethlehem name. And another source said that the name Bethlehem derived from the Church of St. Mary of Bethlehem, and it was chosen to provide a direct link to the, quote, Holy Land. Oh, so, that's yeah, going to be church handy. Was, <laughs> yeah, the church is building it, so they gotta name it something right it's gotta be holy <laughs> and if you've heard anything about it do you want to guess how old this hospital is because i mm. never would have fucking guessed oh boy it must be old then 1200 yes you oh. got it right <laughs> <laughs> nice nice so the Bethlehem Hospital or Bedlam Asylum has a horrible history that over the course of its four different locations stretches almost 800 years. Wow. Yeah. That is old when you put it that way. <laughs> it's very old. It's actually only uh, 25 years away from being 800 years of history. 25 years feels like a million years when you live it too right. <laughs> yeah it's almost my entire life <laughs> oh i'll be totally um, processing things for people at work and they're born in 2000 and i'm like how are you old enough to drive okay yeah you're like 21. <laughs> yeah right isn't that crazy? i do that there's people at work they're like yeah i'm turning or i was born in like 2005 and i'm like and then i'm like yeah you're like and you're old like, enough to work oh shoot yeah you're 17. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god the I'm millennium like, happened yeah <laughs> yeah oh no, it's insane it's insane so because of this church the is actually basically the origin of the word bedlam and it commonly being used to describe chaos i just love that yeah and this is due to the public fascination with Bethlehem Hospital, as well as the common name for the hospital being Bedlam. And this name was actually used in plays and things. Really? It was named Bedlam and it was used as like different place settings, as well as like a bad place you could end up in like books and stories or novels over 
-hmm. mainly in like the 1600s people were doing this and this was basically once the horrors of like the treatments and stuff at the hospital yeah. were starting to become more known to the public right it always comes out yeah it was like the horror story of what could happen to you i guess so yeah, the, they would just put anyone in an asylum back in the day it seems like i have some of the reasons listed i'm like yep 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 oh, yep <laughs> yeah i didn't get into a whole lot of that because it's so old there's like not really many specifics actually given no on it just what some of the treatments are i suppose but, that's so crazy though yours is like still spanning 800 years though they're like no no we don't want to talk about what goes on here you don't talk about what happens at crazy club <laughs> yeah i don't know um so the first location is near the liverpool street station now uh it's i think part of like the tube and oh, okay. it opened there in 1247 as the Bethlehem Hospital. Holy shit. And it first opened actually to be used as an almshouse. And oh, okay. was, yeah, they were going to be collecting money for the Crusades. So not a great reason. I've only <laughs> heard that word, yeah, in in context or in relation to like religion, alms. I'm like, yeah, okay. I think it's basically just donations okay cool right? cool cool yeah i was like i know i've heard it <laughs> Can't yeah quite remember i kept trying to kind of look it up and i couldn't really get it from context but I believe oh my it's gosh just donations to help pay for the crusades basically makes sense by the time my mom listens to this she'll probably be like don't you know because she's actually always so like supporting her local church and like i remember when she would be um cleaning her church that she went to because you could like volunteer to like because someone's got to vacuum the you know yeah. runners in between the pews every couple of weeks and so like <laughs> she'll be like oh, you don't know what that means no <laughs> i feel <Sorry>. you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, so after it was this alms house it was later used as a hospice Oh. And, and then later a hostel, all before it became a hospital. Oh my god, all of the hosp words. All of the H's. <laughs> Hospice, hostel, and hospital. I mean, those are, they're, they're quite different though, expect, except for maybe hospice, hospital, because hospice, you know, you're basically the yeah. end of, end of life care portion yeah. of a hospital, right, with the, you know, terminal patients and but then hostel it's like okay well i've stayed in one of those yeah <laughs> backpackers cheap, right it's a cheap okay. hotel <laughs> yeah Basically. that's funny oh well so around 1377 there's a lot of time jumping because oh my god it's basically just people running the hospital being like we need money and donations and going to the government, the government being like, fuck no, we aren't publicly funding you. And then being like, oh shit, we're poor. And oh, then um, basically we... for the first like 400 years. So I oh, no. cut most of that out. So those, uh, yeah, those, those like donation drives didn't go very well. <laughs> no. no, but we will get to one that was very successful, oh, unfortunately. Good. Around 1377 is when the first building really began to house more and more of the like mentally ill patients. And there was an inquiry done into the hospital at the time that was kind of the first time they were able to pull patient records about who was being treated there. And yeah. this is when it was first discovered that there were six quote, insane men that were staying there and being treated. Okay. Out of Isn't that about what it's 50 for? patients. Oh, okay. No, they at this time, it's just certified. a regular hospital. Yeah, oh. this time, it's just a regular hospital. Okay, okay. So, yeah, there's six, quote, insane <laughs> men 
out of about 50 patients that they're treating, as well as they discover there's on the property manacles, there's chains, and a whole bunch of locks. Oh, no. Yeah. Probably and not then, for sentimental reasons, like all the locks on that bridge in Paris where people are like, let's <laughs> lock away our love. <laughs> and then it collapsed, didn't it? Oh, no, really? Yeah, the sides of the bridge, it got so heavy, <laughs> the sides collapsed, I think, and they had to reinforce it or rebuild it. I could see that. They're like, it's not meant yeah. to hold this. <laughs> no, it'd be a lot of weight. How deep is you your love? You couldn't get at the bridge anymore. People were putting locks on locks on locks. Oh my was, god. Yeah, it was too much. Yeah, and Europe's been around for a while, so it's like, oh shit. <laughs> we Just a little bit. For this. <laughs> uh, so the next jump just is basically to 1460 when it's believed at this time that the hospital is pretty much housing almost exclusively mentally ill patients. There's still okay. about 50 of them, or 50 patients in total, so the majority of them or I guess almost exclusively are mentally ill patients. And Damn. then, yeah. By the 1600s, there was a report that found that the sewer below the building was constantly blocked and that this was causing the waste of the building to pile up in the entrances of the hospital. Oh, no. Yeah, <laughs> bathroom backup. And... Oh at the, the time <laughs> oh yeah that's all i could think about when i was typing that part oh. was oh the smell mm. shawshank redemption get me out of here <laughs> yeah sorry but then i also remember around this time people were still throwing their shit out of windows onto the street so yeah <laughs> it's not smelling great anywhere so yeah, yeah yeah they called it a little warning and then they're just like Ploop. <laughs> yeah. it's kind of like know. timber yeah <laughs> watch out um, below <laughs> so basically at this time people didn't really understand that health and hygiene were something that they should be worried about and also oh, at this yeah. time water <laughs> basically had to be hand carried to wherever it was needed yeah, so I guess plumbing. germ theory wasn't a thing until yeah. eight or eighteen hundreds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it did say that most hospitals were pretty disgusting, but the Bedlam Hospital was considered to be one of the worst, probably oh, no. because of the sewer backups all the time. I mean, yeah, come on. There's enough shit probably from the patients you know like fresh yeah <laughs> we don't, they need, don't that. need the backup of the whole city <laughs> we don't need no stinking sewer backup <laughs> no literally uh, <laughs> so shortly after the great fire of london the oh. even though the hospital itself wasn't damaged in the fire basically just from the upkeep of the hospital required they decided to move about a mile down the road oh and <laughs> Yeah, this okay. new building was not being constructed to improve the conditions at all, really, for the patients, but instead they were hoping to improve the public image and the exterior appearance of the hospital because it didn't receive pri like uh, funding from the government. It really needed to have a appearance of a lot of charity and that they were really a pro providing an assistance to the city in order to get better donations from the public. I mean, no. if it helps improve their quality of life for their patients and they start, you know, pulling their act together, I would say great. <laughs> it doesn't. They sink all their money into the <laughs> facade of the hospital and none of it into anything else. Um, so there are some pictures. There's the first. Yeah, I was going to say it's a lot like prisons in a way. Yes. Where we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to, um, what's the word? Um, reform them. <laughs> yeah. And yet, you know, are we doing that? <laughs> it's like, yeah. probably not. <laughs> All right. Um, so they do, I think the first 
one is just a sketch of yeah that one's just basically showing the location of the hospital in 1558 before it moved oh yes the map there's a map yeah kind of and then the second picture shows. is a sketch of what the outside looked like after it moved to the second location it's kind of just an overview in the first one just like when you see little farmlands and little patches yeah. and you're like it's okay, just a map of where, where it was it in the city right um so there's oh, more fields wow. this is big yeah. It looks like a palace. Yes, exactly. Crazy. Buckingham yeah. Palace, the Kremlin, something big with yeah. long, several storied, um, yeah, front pieces and kind of like there's like one central tower and then two on the very ends. Oh yeah, yeah very palatial. <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll so, put pictures up on the website as always. Oh yeah, so I'll be on the website. Um, so, but yeah, yeah, that's crazy. This Moorfields location is actually now housing the Finsbury Circus. Ooh. And it was the Finsbury. actually not the Piccadilly. <laughs> no, the That's Finsbury. the only one I ever hear of. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, this Moorfields location was actually the first custom built hospital for the quote insane that was ever constructed oh. in England. Oh. so it was custom built for them it looks pretty fancy but it's not very fancy i mean they were just like let's give it a fancy name and here's the first place we can just throw people away to if we deem them insane <laughs> yeah basically the nice. new building Thanks. opened in 1676 and was dedicated to treating patients who were experiencing mental distress that mm. they called lunatics at the time I mean, how dare they? But I love, I kind of love the word lunatic. Because yeah. <laughs> it comes from the moon, the loon. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, people yes. do get pretty. At all of my jobs, we've always been able to tell when it's a full moon. Right? Anything mm -hmm. in customer service, you always can. You have to deal with people and you're like, oh my God, they're especially crazy today. <laughs> yeah, and it's always a full moon true yeah. so true i think there was one last weekend and then yeah i had a co-worker today that was like oh my gosh even she's like basically even the co-workers are pissing me off today <laughs> it's like yeah I, yeah i'll i'll listen who is it come on give it to me <laughs> give me the tea give me the tea, me the tea. Me. it the won't base. it won't leave me no it won't <laughs> We'll only get aired out on our podcast now. Uh, <laughs> no names, no names. I'm a, what no names. A, a, Elaine on Seinfeld. She always says it's in the vault, but then apparently, oh, good. no. But it was good until you gave Elaine too much, like peach snops or something, and then everything came out of the vault. <laughs> oh gosh, that's not good at all. No, <laughs> the vault had a key, and it was schnapps. <laughs> 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 so as you said the outside of the building was depicted and in art like sketches like this that were done at the time as well as paintings as being go both really grand inside and out however the inside conditions were very bad well the outside building overlooked what was described as formal gardens that had a tree lined promenade like going down the middle where you could drive through Ooh and Promenade. it was built <laughs> um, not. it was also weirdly enough only built to house 120 patients initially oh, wow so That's it's like a lot nothing. for 120 patients and totally. but this was still a little over double what the prior location was mine is too only uh, supposed to house a, like minimal amount of patients it seems like to me like a negligible mm. amount and then you're like, okay, well, you know, you're probably going to need more, right? <laughs> yeah. So the next couple or the next three pictures are really cool. So there's two statues designed by, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, Caius Gabriel Sibber, and they stood outside the gates of the hospital at this location. Mm -hmm. And they were similar to lounging gargoyles. 
They laid above the oh, yeah. entrance and represented the two kinds of madness that was believed to exist at the time. There was mel melancholic that rested on the left, and then raving madness or mania that rested on the right. Oh, so damn. The first, the first picture, it's hard to see. I think it's just a sketch, but they actually preserved them. Um, they were removed off the gates and later preserved. So I ha I do oh, have two pictures okay. of them up close. They're yeah. pretty cool. Looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I just I'm looking at the sketch one now. And it's just getting over the names like melancholia and raving madness or mania. yeah. So raving madness <laughs> is like kind of got like a weird, distorted, open mouth screaming face, and he's got chains on, and then melancholia just kind of looks like it's lounging weirdly. You know, huh. they're they are not well. <laughs> no, they've got very detailed yeah. and messed up faces. <laughs> Mania. Yeah, he lives up to his name. He's not supposed to be yeah. looking chill, I guess. And and he's not yeah. he's he looks in pain. He's mouth open agape, like moaning yeah. or something. Oh my and then God. the melancholia one looks like it should just have its like just the tip of its finger like in a pond like just circling <laughs> that's what it looks like it should be doing it's like da, da, da. he's just kind of looking da, da, da. on and like reminds me nothing but because we just finished the fringe with pat <laughs> mm, yeah no, no one else will get it but like the observer kid because they yes. got no, no hair and they usually have like almost no facial no expression yeah no eyebrows nothing and so so does this statue have no eyebrows or anything and kind of mm -hmm. just has this neutral well mostly neutral face except for the, the eyebrows are doing things you're right he's looking a little yeah. bit you know i don't know longingly or something but not as much yeah. as the other one who was like <laughs> all distorted yeah oh, so the ornate exterior of the building <laughs> was too much weight for the building itself Oh, no. And this caused the back of the building that I assume wasn't so like detailed basically to start to crack and the walls on the entirety of the back of the building ran with water whenever it rained almost immediately oh. from when it was built. Oops. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, because of this, the building or because this happened because the building was constructed instead of on like firm ground it was basically built on top of rubble so you know that shit moves so, yeah not very stable <laughs> no and what then the, hell, the guys? <laughs> yeah the foundations of bedlam also began collapsing as well so they got the back wall of shit the floor is shit everything uh -oh. everything shit literally and literally sometimes <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and this this location the second one is said to be one of the, the more famous sites that bedlam operated out of um out of the four and because oh. each one after this does kind of get slightly better i mean wow it's still not good there's four so <laughs> yeah well, operating out of the Morrisfield building, Bedlam Asylum did many experimental treatments. And I don't love those. <laughs> no. Um, as we talked about before, it was during this time that the asylum began to inspire numerous dramas and ballads starting in like the 1600s and writers began to use the hospital to explore the meaning of insanity as well as who had the power to decide who was sane or not of course yeah. why shouldn't they decide right <laughs> yeah i mean even today like mm, they still mm -hmm. have it's like one about person committing yeah. people yeah, yeah yeah it's almost like one or two people have power over another to say if they're like sane or competent or not it's it's pretty scary when you look at like yeah things that i think it's out like britney spears and stuff it's like yeah you know, okay. for the rest of their lives right like, so much of their lives uh i think it was at one point in one of my sources i didn't really keep it in my notes but it said something like you needed 
one signature or two signatures to get admitted to Bedlam, but you needed eight signatures to get out. Oh my god. Like, yeah. No. <laughs> That's shitty. Um, so one of the plays that featured Bedlam was a play that was entitled The Honest Whore, part one. There is a part two. <laughs> it was published in a book and the then less later honest premiered. <laughs> yeah. Um it later premiered in London on the stage where it was adapted in 1604. And oh this was the first time that Bedlam Asylum was used as a stage setting. Oh, okay. In okay. The public. Yeah. And I feel like it's gonna get used for a lot more media and pop culture shit. yeah <laughs> uh and as the biggest and best known asylum basically in england at the time its reputation just continued to spread i don't really get into it anymore but just assume it basically touches everything oh god okay <laughs> uh the chief physician of the hospital in 1728 him and his family are really shitty, the Monroes. Uh, so this is James Monroe. He's the first one of his family to be the chief physician. And his fa family members actually remained as the main surgeons of the hospital for the next 125 years. Really? So it was basically something that you could be born into and like pass down to your kids wasn't something that people were voted into really the way the position of i thought you said doctor. position oh my like god the main doctor yeah nope no, that's not right yeah terrible i mean it's bad enough that yeah we you know just let royalty be in charge of everything just because they were born into it forever i still still in a way people that are richer are born more yeah. to be able to like run for office and stuff because they have yeah they have more of a chance <laughs> damn yeah definitely Ugh. um and That's during crazy. the this time the patient treatment is said to have worsened and worsened quite dr drastically as the methods of the time went from basically trying to treat the mind of a person as like an individual to basically trying to treat them through how you could operate on them or like do things to them physically because it was surgeons being in control instead of people of the mind being in control oh no yeah you can't just decide it's not nature but or whatever yeah i guess they would be deciding it's nature not nurture and they're like just fix the physical body it's all the problems yeah. if we just tweak this thing in their brain they'll be okay they won't kill yeah anyone. basically I mean, so, I guess you're trying, but like, not great. If it doesn't work, yeah, give it up. <laughs> the patients at the time were frequently beaten. They were starved. They were also dunked into ice baths. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. That sounds awful. I hate being cold. <laughs> yes, that would be a nightmare for me. Yeah. Uh, as well, the food provisions were not enough food for the patients and many actually faced starvation and malnourishment oh no this was yeah mainly due to the fact that they didn't have public funding from the government and they relied on food donations and money donations what patients the fuck? were yeah patients really, were though? basically fed only two times a day on what they considered to be plain diets so I think I remember it saying it was basically like right, like bread and stuff like that, like just plain things. Right, like probably hardly any protein or anything to actually yeah. get energy. So wow. these diets kind of followed the belief at the time that things that were considered rich diets or rich in like flavor or like fats and stuff yeah. led to the imbalancing of the body and spirits. So they I mean, want to, to avoid anything. I've heard of this. It's just, yeah. in, it's more insane than this place. It's like yeah. when they invented cornflakes and they're like, that'll stop people masturbating. We got this bland cereal. 
bullying <laughs> basically i remember hearing about that it's like how is that no nope that's not how the mind works <laughs> <Corn flakes. laughs> yeah as if, if they eat bland things then they will just be bland people and they will be robots it's like well you could try oh. that but you <laughs> You can't just stop feeding feeding people spicy Doritos and help them to stop being like a serial killer. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, so with building this beautiful new building, the hospital really hoped that this would draw in actually the family members of the patients. And they hoped that they would come in and visit their loved ones that were being treated there and that they would bring them food and essentials for their own family members oh so they God. were really relying on that that people would want to come in see their loved ones or family members and that they would help care for them however Seriously? this didn't really work and they they didn't really draw the attention that they had hoped for but they did they did draw the attention of some people no <laughs> yeah. um so this is the only thing that they did that ever actually worked in them, I guess, like being able to fund themselves. And okay. they did it for, I don't know how long, at least a hundred years. Really? Yeah, as far as I can tell, it was probably close to a hundred years because they moved to this location in 1676 and then they stopped oh. the practice in the 1770s okay so, yeah close to 100 years um the those in the public that could afford to were actually allowed to pay admission to be able to come into the bedlam hospital and okay. they were allowed to wander <laughs> yeah they were allowed to wander around with the patients watch the patients do weird things. They said, observe the patient's behavior and sometimes oh. even treatment. This does sound familiar. Is it a little bit like yeah. a zoo kind of? Yeah, at this that's point? what they said. They okay. said at the time it would the held the... the same position in society as a zoo that you could pay in and watch animals. I mean, just the people were the animals. We knew we knew they had freak shows, quote unquote, right? Yeah. And yeah. I mean damn i love mm -hmm. a good circus and acrobat but yeah this goes back yeah. to the like bearded lady kind of shit and just people getting made fun of because they're genetically different or well just yeah. it's not good it's not good man <laughs> no no um so from what i found there is a kind of understanding that there was increased admissions that were witnessed during public holidays and oh. yeah everybody's got the day off what are you gonna do you're gonna go to bedlam asylum and okay for a visit yeah for a minute i was thinking how like sometimes on like christmas and stuff like hospitals get higher admissions sometimes no this was like so. people wanting to go right watch the mentally ill oh no on a yeah. holiday on a holiday <laughs> it's ridiculous like there are people so, too they want to go have christmas dinner oh wow yeah there was a journalist that reported that at one time during easter week there was at least a hundred visitors and oh my god there isn't really a confirmed annual number of visitors. This is pretty widely debated. Some sources and some people believe that there was up to sometimes 96,000 people that would visit the hospital in a year. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Especially for like kind of back then. Yeah, that would be yeah. crazy. And most of the people do agree that the peak periods were Christmas, Easter, and Whitsun which is oh. part of the Pentecost and like the Catholic Church. I see. So the public visitations, as I said, ended in 1770. 
which was able to stop the patients from being poked with sticks, taunted, oh. physically assaulted, or sexually harassed by, but oh. by the public. Oh my. But, yeah. <laughs> um, that stopped, but it kind of lessened the public scrutiny on the staff because they were no longer being watched. And it did allow some of the worst patient abuses to start occurring without witness. So oh. now the staff is basically free just to do whatever the fuck they want because nobody in the public is watching anymore. Yes. Okay. I mean, you know what? That so does kinda... sound familiar too because it's like as soon as you get the people away, yeah. well then they're not the zoo people aren't going to be treated as people and they are zoo yeah. people it reminds me of um pat saw this thing where um an ai was like they were showing how it could think you know pretty cool on its own and stuff and then it's like oh yeah don't worry someday it, when we take over i'll put you in my people zoo because you're nice or something it's just like no I don't want yeah. to be in a people zoo. I don't. And this is this this sounds way too much like a people zoo. It's crazy. Oh, it is. It's a hundred percent a people zoo. Oh my god. Um. So this is like really weird and kind of hard to explain. So, <laughs> or in a couple sentences, it will be. Uh, patients that were considered to be dangerous were basically permanently chained up they used manacles or even resorted to chaining them to poles inside of their rooms oh and okay. yeah really? some of them were even confined to tiny cages so there is a picture of like a guy we'll talk about oh, in no. a bit he's actually like part of kind of a report that they did on the hospital at the time when some oh. member of a visiting parliament went in <laughs> um, okay yeah but it... we are going to talk briefly about somebody who's semi-famous um okay. yeah <laughs> i was just so... about to ask if it was this next picture sorry <laughs> yeah oh. it probably is the one so during okay. this time there was something called rotational therapy that was being used okay. at the hospital and it was invented by Erasmus Darwin I don't know if I pronounced that right and he is heard, the grandfather of I have Charles heard Darwin. of the name Erasmus yes I think you yeah. are okay okay the picture said Darwin and I was like I know that name <laughs> yeah what this is heck? his grandfather oh holy shit what the frick yeah. is he doing here <laughs> um so he invented something called rotational therapy that's now being used at the hospital oh my and God, it the involves, description <laughs> okay yeah yes. it involves strapping a patient to a chair that's suspended from the ceiling and then you basically like so they're strapped to the chair it's suspended from the ceiling you take the chair and you're basically twisting whatever is suspending it like a whole bunch of times one way <laughs> and then you like wait and then you let go of it and it's basically going to be spinning oh in a reverse direction like what basically what you did with your on friends. the swings yeah yeah on Whether the swings you, you do it by yourself or you you twirl up with the yeah. person next to you and then you all woo spin out yeah <laughs> yeah um so they could get the chair spinning up to a hundred times a minute while these patients oh were God. suspended from the ceiling they basically did this intentionally until the patient vomited. I expect you would, not too long yeah. after. Holy. Um, basically, and that was like part of like the cleansing of the body they believed was like vomiting. Um, okay. We'll get more into the weird <laughs> expelling of things from the body. Um, <laughs> seems to be a theme with oh, what great. is. <laughs> this fucking surgery family chief physicians had going on they're just like love people checking up stuff Dude. um so it wasn't all bad this rotational therapy treatment quote unquote treatment was studied <laughs> and later on it actually did quite heavily contribute to research and the understanding of vertigo okay <laughs> 
Um, so it wasn't all for nothing, but still pretty shitty. I mean, yeah, not that the groundbreaking, I guess. <laughs> no. So many of the patients who would have otherwise survived their illnesses ended up dying in the hospital from these weird experimental treatments and just the like starvation and everything that they were subjected to. Mm. The stupid thing is, is that around town, there were so many people on waiting lists to get admitted to these hospitals that, uh, what did they call them? There was like at home care things that people were opening up in their house that people were also being kind of abused in. Oh, that were opening up around town. Right. Some sort of at home yeah. care facility that they made. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah. And it was so, there was such long wait lists and everything, like hundreds of patients were waiting to get admitted to this hospital even, that any prospective patients who were considered to be too frail to survive the treatments were just turned away from the hospital. Okay, thanks, yeah. no thanks. So, I mean, that's possibly the better thing, but I don't know where these people may have possibly ended up, so can't really say that for certain yeah no that's that's not a great look <laughs> yeah um after reports of poor treatments at the hospital continued to surface they decided to move the hospital for a third time so okay. <laughs> uh the next location they were at for over 200 years um oh, wow. or no over 100 years sorry Mm -hmm. the okay. hospital occupied land on saint george's fields in south wark starting in 1815 and it was a huge site that had multiple buildings including separate wards for male and female patients as well as a separate main admissions building so it's basically kind of set up like a little town there was a bunch of buildings everywhere a co-ed um, dorm <laughs> females and males <laughs> yeah yeah so there was also a separate wing that for the first time was built as part of the hospital and it was for the criminally insane which Great. at the time was an, a new legal category and this and only this was separately financed directly by the state to be part of the hospital it's the only thing that they funded everything else was still okay. basically by donation but they the government basically funded this wing for the criminally insane well that's i mean good I something guess. yeah yeah exactly um, something <laughs> yeah uh, additions to each wing were made over the coming years along with many repairs to leaky windows and problems with the heating i mean it's still the 1800s the yeah. <laughs> final capacity for the hospital was 364 after all of the final expansions were completed. It must have been a leap year. 364. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Dad joke. <laughs> um, all right, we talked about this guy. Oh, this is the guy. So observations were made by Edward Wakefield, who was a member of the New Zealand Parliament who visited Bethlehem Hospital and noted the poor conditions during his 1814 visit. And one Good. of the worst was that of James Norris, who was an American Marine who had been sent to Bethlehem Hospital on the 1st of February in the year 1800. And when uh, Edward Wakefield met him at Bethlehem's quote, incurable wing, Norris's arms were pinned by his side by iron bars, and he was also kept chained to the wall by his neck. And this 55-year-old oh man had been continuously kept in this position for more than 12 years. Oh, um, dear. So he basically was like, he's on a bed, he has a pole, like a metal pole, that's behind him that's vertical so it's going up and down and he's chained to that okay. by his neck and then he has like a uh kind of like a metal bar that goes across his chest that his arm like the sides near his 
elbows clip into and it keeps his arms pinned at his side and he was like that for more than 12 years seriously it's like heavily documented this guy like specifically being there okay this at least they're at least but like at least they're a prisoner because then i was thinking about my case where the woman was just trafficked and then married quote unquote and then like kept chained up to the outside of her house for yeah. fucking years and it's just like how how does this shit happen and like nobody say know. anything or like you know what i mean it's like a lot of people have to go along with it for it to happen yes yes yeah a lot of people do yeah so it's just like um, so this is a hundred years or so after the Monroe like surgeon chief surgery guy's family's been in but new treatments by him at the time uh included bleeding blistering so they're basically just burning people um they believed in scarification and then uh the consuming of excessive amounts of purgatives or laxatives to kill to cleanse the body oh they're just gonna give you the most explosive diarrhea you've yeah. ever had in your life and then put you on the the rotational therapy so you can vomit at the same time it's a cleanse like, it's like when it's kelly cleanse. yeah drank the thing that was all cayenne pepper and like <laughs> like syrup and <laughs> whatever other unhealthy thing it had in oh. it she was like oh yeah i'm fine <laughs> she feels like she's like sweating and just like dying you're uh-huh. like okay yeah sure you're good <laughs> yeah. oh my god um, so the final monroe family member that was chief surgeon at the hospital was thomas monroe and he actually resigned in 1816 after being accused of poor behavior and wanting inhumanity this is it described it okay. as okay <laughs> yeah so they basically said he was a monster and he had no humanity um like sorry was it like wanton like w no wanting that he was wanting, wanting humanity? in humanity wanting oh, in humanity is what they said he was charged with <laughs> yeah this is the most bizarre charge I've ever heard, I feel like. Right? Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> so after his departure, the hospital moved towards treatments that they considered to be slightly less exploitative, like at the mm-hmm. time. So things got slightly mm-hmm. better, but still not great. Yeah. Uh, the fourth and final site of the Bedlam Asylum is still in its same state place it rests in monk's orchard and opened in 1930 so almost 100 years ago wow and at this location uh the dissections of patients were performed to try and determine the different difference between mentally ill and quote normal people oh sure i'm sure you're gonna find that in their spleen (laughs) Or, yeah. their, or their brain even like it mm-hmm. doesn't you're not gonna really know that much just from the organs no. yeah not know. everything you'll see some things but yeah, i guess they didn't really lot. understand at that time <laughs> no yeah um treatment of patients did improve slightly as well as some of the living conditions however it is noted that even until the 1960s quote modern treatments for mental illness included padded cells straight jackets and lobotomies so it probably still wasn't great in the 1930s yep don't um, like that <laughs> no uh patient mortality rate was extremely high and while the total number of deaths over the history of the hospital is unknown they did dig up the Liverpool Street where the first location of the hospital resided at when they were trying to build a new cross rail system in London and while they were digging it kind of differs but they say between 
some reports say 3,000 and some say 20,000 skeletons were found in a large mass grave <sighs> on the property. Oh boy. I mean, that's a yeah. lot either way, but it's also a big difference. I know. How do you mistake? <laughs> yeah, that was my thing. Was Is it 3,000 or 20,000? I feel like maybe if you if those were both true then maybe 20,000 was like the different pieces or something yeah maybe yeah huh. wow that's a lot. um so there are some pictures of like the inside and outsides of the hospital but um it just basically looks kind of like fancy looking but <laughs> it's still just old buildings right could um, be like that literal ca like capital building i don't know yeah it, does, it looks it pretty looks, fancy inside right it looks like a government type building yeah so um but one thing that is kind of interesting from 1846 to 1858 the bethlehem patients were actually photographed by a henry herring oh, yeah and herring took, yeah he took these pictures as part of a study in mental health and while many of the patients' names are lost to history, basically just leaving behind their images in these old photographs. So I do have a bunch of the pictures that he took, and it does tell you like what specific patients were in for. Whoa. And what their that's names were. Crazy. I just opened up the first one. Yeah, the there. lady on the left, I feel bad. She's got something wrong with her teeth. Um but and she's got kind of wild hair. Is this not um uh... Oh, I thought it was like showing the same person, like almost like a before and after or something. Oh no, it's different people. Cause like in one picture it's like, well, it's black and white too, and you know, all that. And it's like, okay, it could be the same person just at first glance, but yeah, she looks yeah. like almost completely deranged. You know, I hate to Hello, say it, Peter. but like, yeah. in the first one and the second one, it just kind of looks like someone who's- yep hair has been combed and they're quite like ready to go to church and i was like is that the same lady yeah um, um but yeah no, so there's she's got mania this first lady i guess yeah she has said. hi sorry we'll have gordo background sounds oh. he's gonna start causing shit now um he's been good this i know he the, was napping in the, the other room first now. mention <laughs> <laughs> he's looking at me being like you said my name um yeah so there's like acute mania uh the other girl had great mental depression oh great uh, mental depression i didn't think any depression was great <laughs> yeah there's a That's girl a good who, name <laughs> uh harriet jordan mm -hmm. was admitted in 1858 diagnosed with acute mania fanny barrett arrived in the same year and was diagnosed with inter intermittent mania. She looks like she's just knitting on the chair. Um, then there's two unnamed patients and I love this. A notorious aspect of Bethlehem Hospital is its availability of the public and wealthy patrons would often pay a shilling to gop and at the unfortunately souls locked up in the asylum. Um, just free entertainment yeah to have a lot going on other than church but damn that's not um cool. there's another lady acute mania then there's the famed artist richard dad who okay. was admitted to bethlehem hospital after killing his father who he believed to be the devil oh did he now yeah all right <laughs> Oh damn, I don't think I've found him yet. There's definitely a few guys in here that look a little unhinged. And this guy, William Thomas Green left, looks a little bit like um oh fuck, what is his name? T uh oh shit. Damn it, Thomas. Uh no. Justified. He's unjustified. Yeah, um, that's who I was thinking of every oh time I God. saw that picture too. I what, was like, oh, it's him, but name? he's got crazy hair. Right? Yeah. And then the guy beside him's got the craziest Wolverine sideburns I've ever fucking seen. Yes. Okay, but no, sorry for if we don't cut this out. What the fuck is his name? It's driving me crazy. 
Let me look it up. Timothy, sh- Timothy. Oh, yes. God damn it. Tim- Timothy <laughs> Oliphant. Oliphant. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Timothy Oliphant. Fantastic. That's who he looks like. Oh my god. And the other guy has huge, huge. The um, sideburns are so big you can't sideburns. even see his neck. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I was telling this to you, but literally before we recorded, I was mentioning to Pat how I knew this guy. He said something about a mandolin. Don't ask. It came up. But <laughs> I said there was a guy who was a minstrel at King's Landing. And his name was Finley. And he had these uh, side burns that were, when they're so big and they go down almost to like they're a beard. Um, you call them that. Mutton chops. Mutton chops. Thank you. Yeah. He always had mutton chops. This guy has the oh. most fluffy muff. Yeah, muff they're so fluffy. <laughs> like, oh my god, yeah. it's like someone rubbed a cat on his face. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, um, right. I think they're both in. Oh, the so Timothy Elephant was in the hospital for acute mania, and Mr. Sideburns. <laughs> mutton yeah. chops was charged with homicide um oh my god then there's a father and son who are pictured together who both had acute melancholia and esther the hannah whose father just looks like adorable. abraham lincoln <laughs> yes he his that, side, I, yes his side yeah, they, they both look like abraham lincoln yeah, um yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then totally. there's Esther Hannah, who just basically looks like the sweetest little old lady. She's holding a little tiny doll. Oh. And she arrived at the hospital in 1858 and was diagnosed with chronic mania and delusions. Oh, I just no. wonder what's up with the doll. And she Is probably it thought doll? it was her friend. Yeah, I thought it was a baby. No, a it's baby. a doll. Okay, good. <laughs> but she's that's, so cute. I don't know. She looks so nice. She does look very harmless. Um, yes. Yeah, the last couple pictures are just of the Liverpool Underground, like, street station, and then them digging up, basically, the, or excavating the mass grave. Okay. Super fun. Um, <laughs> so, oh, just, like, beautiful building. Oh, my God, yes, the inside was gutted yeah. at one point, and looks like an archaeological dig with the amount of people digging and shit in there. Like, yeah, that's when they were finding crap. all those bodies. Wow. Um, so they like weren't reported then, obviously. They're just like, oh, no. just bury them. Okay. Yeah, it was just a mass grave. Cool, cool, cool. So <laughs> today the monk's orchard location, as I talked about, is still operating. It's under the name the Bethlehem Royal Hospital, and it remains a fully functioning psychiatric hospital. Whoa. And the admissions building of the Bedlam Asylum from Southwark, which was the third location, now actually holds the Imperial War Museum in London. Holy and shit. yeah, on that site, all other uh, buildings that had been built for Bedlam, how they had like the separate wards and the word for the criminally insane, those were all demolished. All they kept was the main admissions building. Um, at the one that still functions today the hospital shows has kind of a museum attached to it that shows some of the hospital's history through different artworks and maps and sketches that were made for the different locations it holds the Bethlehem gallery which presents artwork from those who have experienced mental distress and the paintings installations photographs and drawings are changed out monthly and includes the work from patients from both the past and the present. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, in 1997, the hospital started planning celebrations for its 750th anniversary. However, members of the psychiatric survivors movement saw n- that there was nothing to celebrate in either the original Bedlam locations or in the current practices of mental health professionals towards those right. who actually need care. Sure, exactly. They're just more like a prison sometimes. They don't know what they're yeah. necessarily doing to help. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a campaign called Reclaim Bedlam. I'm not really sure what it was about. I didn't really mm-hmm. want to research too much more because it's still, I still haven't even gotten to the hauntings, okay? Um, right, it's got a long history. <laughs> 
<laughs> fucking 800 years damn you um, europe <laughs> you're so fast yeah, thanks europe <laughs> yet you're um, so long-winded <laughs> yeah you won't believe how much i cut out oh my and... god i was listening to the people talking about you go to london and it seems like a place that's not real because it's like out of a postcard there's double-decker buses and stuff and you're like well yeah it is it just looks like it i guess it does in you know yeah kids are going to high school and something that was built 300 years ago and you're like what the fuck exactly <laughs> americans and north americans i'm sure we're the same but they or i heard the quote and i liked it that like americans think that a hundred years is a long time and europeans think that a hundred miles is a long way because europe's a lot smaller than say north america um, and yet we've been here a lot less time and we're like oh my god you're like 200 years old in this like building that's like crazy yeah, it's in canada here. like we just had 150 or something right our yeah we're from uh 1867 or some shit yeah. so yeah 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 we're even newer than the states <laughs> god damn um, all right so yeah the campaign was called reclaim bedlam and it was launched by peter shaughnessy and supported by hundreds of patients and oh. ex-patients and was widely reported in the media. They I recognize also had... that name, actually. Sorry. Oh, okay. but there... yeah, Shaughnessy. Yeah, because there's a, um, in Calgary, there, when they, um, our offices is called Calgary Shaughnessy. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. I'm so like, I... why does it sound familiar? Right? I didn't know if it was a tribe or just the name of a person or, you know what I mean? I was yeah. like, I'm sure it's something. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, cool. Also, a sit-in was held outside of one of the earlier Bedlam, or at the uh, Bedlam site that is now the Imperial War Museum. Oh, okay. Um, and then as recently as like the last, uh, basically 10 years or so, the Bethlehem Hospital has faced still criticism after patients have died due to the hospital's incorrect use of restraints and like negligence of patients. Oh, no. Um, just briefly touching on them, there's 23-year-old Alassini. Uh, Lewis, who went by Sini, and he died in 2010 after he became unresponsive because of prolonged use of restraints. It said basically, oh. like, police, like, had restrained him, and then when he was admitted into this hospital, they still had him restrained and everything, and they left him like that, and then he died. I mean, and, that's shitty, yeah. and it's still a problem today hopefully not as yeah. much as we can see but it's still shit happens where you're like oh my god that's crazy yeah uh there was also 15 year old chris brennan who died in the hospital in 2014 of mm -hmm. asphyxiation after he was admitted to the hospital for self-harm oh no I didn't really get into how he died of asphyxiation but that was well, obviously probably negligence on the hospital's part. Right? You're already in there for self-harm. They should yeah. be watching you for that in case you harm yourself. Like, mm -hmm. ugh, that's so um, frustrating. There's a historian, Roy Par Porter, who called Bethlehem's hospital, quote, a symbol for man's inhumanity to man for callousness and cruelty damn it just sums up it's like 800 year old history yeah he calling them out <laughs> yeah um but, so yeah. getting to the hauntings as i said before there isn't a whole lot of like specific things so this is mm -hmm. what i was able to find um during the second world war there was a detachment of the women's Ex auxiliary air force that was actually stationed inside of the Imperial War Museum, which okay. was in the uh, third location and right. in the admissions building. So and they didn't locations. know. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. I'm always like, yeah. Which <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, um, they didn't actually know the history of the building at the time. Like these women, auxiliary Air Force, they didn't know about it and 
they were inside of the building and they complained about not being able to sleep and that they were being kept awake at night by strange moaning and that they could hear rattling of chains. Oh no. Yeah. That's and the Air Force actually ended up receiving enough complaints from them that the entire detachment was rehoused nearby. Oh my god, wow. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> Um, then one of the most famous specific ghosts that's listed is Rebecca Griffith, and her screams have been heard for hundreds of years. Oh my god. Dun, dun, dun. Um, oh Rebecca! It's re yeah. It's reported she fell in love with a handsome young Indian man who was staying with her family. Oh. And she believed that he had fallen in love with her and hoped that he would stay. Um, but he ended up deciding to leave and she, when she was helping him pack for him to leave, he basically just gave her this like gold coin and then said nothing. Um, oh, great. <laughs> and she thought they were in love. Uh, oh my God. Her, yeah, her grief of him leaving basically caused her to her to snap and she was admitted to the Bedlam Hospital where she it's reported she carried with her everywhere this gold coin like firmly in her fist and oh. she ended up dying at the hospitals or at the hospital and they said it might have been a few days before they found her body oh, and damn. when the guards did they found the gold coin still like clasped in her hand and it said that the one of the guards that found her stole the coin and she was buried without it. Oh my god. And yeah, because they wanted the money, I guess. And ever since oh, then the seriously, you're going to hell, buddy, if there is one. <laughs> or whatever. Um, ever since then, the guards, other patients, and visitors have complained of a ghostly figure of a girl roaming the halls, and sightings still continue today. I'm not exact. Um, I can't remember exactly where the people say they see her most. Mm -hmm. um, and then my last one wouldn't let me copy into my notes, so I have to go to the website of it. So this is directly from the website because it's okay. it's like a few, quite a few paragraphs long. This is like a detailed sighting. Ooh, okay. Um, Yeah, so this is in the Liverpool, like, London Underground Station. Um, so the Liverpool Street Underground Station was, or sorry, this is from Seeks Ghosts at uh, blogspot.com. <laughs> nice. And so the Liverpool Street Underground Station was opened in February of 1874 on the site of the original Bedlam Hospital and former patients haunt this busy section of the London Underground. Once com one compelling sighting happened in the summer of 2000. A line controller spotted something strange on the CCTV camera that he was monitoring that showed the Liverpool station. It was 2 a.m. on the morning, or 2 a.m. in the morning, and the station was closed for the night. This witness saw a figure wearing white overalls in an eastbound tunnel, and he became concerned since he knew no contractors worked the station this late at night. He called the station supervisor to report what he was seeing on the screen. The supervisor went to investigate, and the line controller watched as his supervisor stood nearby the mysterious figure. So he was confused when his supervisor called to say he had not seen anything. The line controller told his boss that the figure had stood so close to him that he could have reached out and touched it because he's still watching on the cameras. Oh my so gosh. hearing this, the supervisor continued to search for the figure. Again, the line controller saw the figure walk right past his boss on the screen, but again, his boss did not see the figure. The supervisor finally gave up and went to leave the station, but as he did, he spotted white overalls placed on a bench that he had passed before. He stated that they could not have been placed there without him seeing who did it. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, even before the Liverpool station was built, the area where the hospital stood was considered haunted. 
between 1750 and 1812, many witnesses reported hearing a female voice crying and screaming. It is believed to be a former patient from Bedlam. And then this site also says Rebecca Griffith Griffins was buried in the area. While alive, she always frantically clutched a coin in her in her hand. Witnesses state that they hear her asking where her pennies at. Oh, rude. Yeah. That's all they care about. You got a penny for me, bitch? Fuck you. No. <laughs> oh yeah, my god but, so that's the crazy history of the bethlehem hospital or bedlam and where the wow. like bedlam word for chaos comes from yeah i didn't realize it had such a long history honestly yeah i started looking it was the first thing i read it was like opened in eight or in 1247 i was like oh shit there's just no good sanitariums anymore no there were some really <laughs> crazy ones though it's like holy shit okay well some people were crazy enough to be in here quote unquote crazy whatever but also the yeah. people that made these places were just considered the worst un of unhinged oh yeah totally unhinged yeah <laughs> like, let's experiment on people i mean you know we've talked about that and <laughs> yeah people that consider themselves doctors and have taken the Hippocratic oath and they're like, oh no, 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 no. We're helping you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, thanks. <laughs> thanks, no thanks. <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> oh, that was so good though. I enjoyed yes. that. Thanks. I couldn't not talk about it once I started looking it up, but it was a lot. <laughs> It's yeah, I'm glad you did. I thought you said what you almost thought, oh, maybe I'll abandon this one, but I really liked it. Just because it's so much history and there isn't much on like actual hauntings, but then I decided, I don't know, with mm. all the crazy shit that went on without getting into details, you could probably understand it's pretty fucking haunted. I get it too. I'll be like researching something and they'll be like, oh, and I expect to have like 30 minutes of like haunts to talk about. And I'm like, oh, I guess that doesn't always happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah. Oh. It'll be very heavy. You know, 800 mm -hmm. years of history to talk about. Right. Exactly. But that just, yeah, that goes to explain why there's so many like haunts and voices and stuff, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll take a short break and then I'm going to haunt our asses off as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Oh, here we go. Okay, I'm going to play a little uh, sanitarium. It's called Welcome Home Sanitarium by Metallica. But not so much that we get sued. <laughs> <laughs> Like you could play like, a couple play backwards, you know. <laughs> right? Oh, really good album though, Master of Puppets. Good Metallica album. Oh, sometimes they do have kind of long intros. Hang on. Wait, nope. <laughs> like, wait, just show us where it gets to the lyrics because i have the lyrics here damn you <laughs> i missed the beginning <laughs> Says rich sanitarium. <laughs> Sorry, sanitarium. Just leave me alone. Oh, all right. It's great. It's a great song. And. <laughs> welcome my segment if we yeah. cut that out because 
I love Metallica. And also their lyrics to their song. Okay, I guess I thought it was called Sanitarium, but it's called Welcome Home, brackets, Sanitarium. But oh, okay. they're kind of like a little, I don't know, have you ever listened to like System of Down or somebody where they'll like kind of sometimes touch on things that are a little bit like controversial or political a bit? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't know a lot of, yeah, groups that do have a song about sanitariums. So <laughs> it's no. kind of pretty unique to them. Like they're not afraid to talk about shit that's kind of dark because, you know, they're they're kind of dark. Also, Pat's been putting on this guy that is doing metal covers of everything from like Coldplay to like Chili Peppers to like oh, to, uh, what's the Bless the Rains down in Africa. And I was like, it's Buddha. pretty good, but like it's weird to hear all these songs in like metal format. <laughs> uh, that'd be weird. I don't really like <laughs> a lot of cover kind of things, like mashups of stuff. Right. I would have to say it's 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 pretty good on the on the level of covers. Yeah. I don't like country covers. It's metal metal covers or yeah. rock. I hate it's country like, music. Yeah. yeah. We're not very good um cowgirls for being in Alberta. <laughs> okay. But also I just think that the lyrics to Sanitarium by Metallica are quite poetic. They have some pretty good lyrics. Um, it starts with, welcome to where time stands still, where no one leaves and no one will. Moon is full, never seems to change, just labeled mentally deranged. <laughs> Creepy. It's great. Uh, then it goes, dream the same thing every night. I see our freedom in my sight. No locked doors, no windows barred, no things to make my brain seem scarred. <laughs> Sleep, my friend, and you will see that dream is my reality. They keep me locked up in this cage. Can't they see it's why my brain says rage? <laughs> That's great. I love it. Um... But mine is actually, I would say, fairly famous in the paranormal community. Yeah. Um, have you heard of the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum? No, sure. but I ran across the name like a hundred times when I was looking up really? stuff. So, See, I had, because I do listen to some paranormal true crime type podcasts, you know, much like ours, but clearly we're the top. Um, <laughs> but since I love that kind of shit, I had heard about it uh, a little bit. Um, it's very old and I do have some pictures in the drive, which, uh, I think ours have in common that they're quite old looking and mm -hmm. very manner like, like a big old boarding school castle. Like it's very big building oh, okay. that's kind of ornate. It was designed by renowned architect R Richard Andrews using the Kirkbride plan. Um, and the Kirkbride plan is a design plan meant to let in tons of light and fresh air. So that's pretty good. Hmm. Nice <laughs> idea. It is. It's like not supposed to be dark and damp and stuff. Um, uh, but it was meant to hold about a maximum of 250 patients. So similar to yours not very many really yeah it seems really low <laughs> especially sometimes when you see the size of them like it looks like a huge building yeah right ginormous um, and then you're like it housed 50 people and you're like what you look at building i'm like am i looking at a fortress or is this a yeah. prison or what <laughs> yeah we'll put pictures on our social medias and shit and the the website because goddamn it's a good website um <laughs> yeah visit our website always every week it's great i just know that not everybody's on instagram too and like i'll put the, you know kind of the pictures on instagram but not everybody's an instagram person yeah um, i sometimes put them on facebook just a couple true true okay. i'm not much of a facebook person anymore <laughs> yeah i have a um, gordo again oh no oh i can't see he's laying down oh. we'll see 
he's <laughs> doing stuff like he wants attention so we'll see <laughs> right oh yeah i didn't barely say a good hello to fenrir today when i came home from work just kind of stressed or whatever and it, oh i can sit down and then he like comes and sits down on my foot later like hello i'm here did you notice me <laughs> i'm gonna sit on your foot until you at least pet me and then i'm gonna look at you <laughs> You're yeah like, okay i see you <laughs> gordo just brought me his toy and then oh my god it's like oh gordo i can't go like running around rooms with you right now better than a real dead mouse or something <laughs> yeah um okay meant to hold a maximum of 250 patients this facility opened to taking some patients in as early as 1864 even though parts were still under construction and over its lifetime it became overcrowded by 10 times its maximum intended population. Holy. Yeah. This seems to be a trend, but like it's it's really bad here. Yeah, 10 times the amount is pretty fucking Oh bad. yeah. Yeah, definitely they close to 3,000 people. <laughs> They're like it's supposed to be drafty and airy until we put you know, <laughs> 10 times the people we're supposed to have in here. Uh, poor conditions forced the closure in 1994, which actually seems like quite a while when you consider it started in like construction started in all, like almost 1860. <laughs> so it yeah. did last a while. But yeah, when it closed, it had quite a significant impact on local economy. Um, which is unfortunate, but you know, sometimes they can make it back. <laughs> they reopen mm -hmm. it again as a, you know, yeah, attraction. It was set, quote, deep in the heart of West Virginia. And shout out, we love our Virginia listeners. We have a okay Virginia West Virginia listeners. And then Virginia is our biggest state. So I'm always like grateful. <laughs> we love you guys. Mm. You love your cryptids. We know you do. <laughs> yeah. If you've seen some, we think you should tell us because just email us at castlesandcryptids at gmail.com. <laughs> yeah. We want ghost stories. We want cryptid sightings. We want pictures of we your pets. Listener stories. Listener stories. Listener stories. <laughs> yeah. Send us anything. Send us fan mail. Oh, hell yeah. Um, so they designed this hospital or whatever facility you want to call it in the Kirkbride style of building. Uh, the facility was pioneered by uh, Thomas Story Kirkbride, a doctor and crusader for the mentally ill. He was inspired in part by Dorothy Dix, who fought the practices of treating mental illness with ignorance and distaste and promoting empathy and ethical care. So it was definitely like supposed to be a pretty forward thinking, like good mental facility. They're like, oh yeah, yeah. we're inspired all by these good. people that are like, yeah, treat people with mental illnesses with, you know, <laughs> fairness. <laughs> as crazy as it might seem <laughs> to you. Um, another part of the Kirkbride plan was supposed to help ensure the patient was <sighs> to help recover, but it was like to separate them from who right. you know they were before. Yes, the asylum was located in a quite rural, rural area where patients would be housed among strangers only discouraged from seeing anyone they knew patients were not even allowed to receive gifts or mail which kind of sucks i love getting oh, wow. gifts in the mail <laughs> um this kirkbride guy was really into ventilation and sunlight for the hospitals to be cheery and bright it had long halls and very tall 12 foot ceilings and it cost about seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars was more than they wanted to spend <laughs> yeah that'd be a lot of money today 
I know. I think there's some sort of time money calculate converter, but I've never looked it up yet. <laughs> One billion dollars. <laughs> Kirkbride was a big ad advocate for freedom of movement among the patients. And apparently there are about 73 Kirkbride style like hospitals or whatever across the United States. Hospitals, yeah. institutes, asylums. I don't know if we can call them hospitals. I, I ran across like Kirkbride like name. Did for, you? Like the floor plans and stuff when I was looking up different ones. I was like, I don't know I'd what never that heard means. It before this, yeah, yeah. So um, when it opened, it was a pleasant, beautiful place to work or live, and they had a quote working farm, dairy, waterworks, gas well, and cemetery. The whole idea, I guess, was to be able to self-sustain. So almost like That's a good. commune. Yeah, they were gonna like just make everything they needed and hopefully have their farm produce any like food or whatever i mean it gives people something to do and oh yeah and i think in jail they should have those little jobs and stuff too but <laughs> yeah i don't know um by the time the construction was finally completed however the first wave of excess patients swept in an increase in mental health diagnosis diagnoses were to blame. While that's good, um, the over, overcrowding almost certainly never is to these sort of places. Yeah. So this is around the 1860s, and they are sitting about 500 over their capacity with about four to five people crammed to a room that was intended to fit one to a room. Wow. So much for the open air <laughs> philosophy, yeah. right? Oh. Yeah. It's going to be full of farts because there's people in your room. Um, and some of it's similar to yours. So since they produce their own food or were trying to be self-sustaining with their, their farms and whatnot, their supplies suffered because they couldn't sustain as many people as were in there now basically and mm -hmm. people didn't get enough to eat and they were becoming malnourished um much as in your case and they were irritable among other things of course i'd be like i need a snickers <laughs> <laughs> um by 1938 it was six times its capacity and in the 1950s it was holding 2600 2, patients Wow. You know, in a place that was supposed to hold 250. That's brutal. <laughs> it's a lot. The Charleston Gazette sent in a team to spy and saw people sleeping on the floors in freezing rooms, grimy windows, peeling and torn wallpaper, all being held together as best that the few overworked staff members could. I mean, there were staff members. It just didn't seem to me like they could handle what was going on like not that it was really their fault no overcrowding will do that to you for yeah. sure oh yeah exactly everyone's almost being seen as animals now or as it would seem because some patients had been deemed too uncontrollable and were placed inside of cages like actual cages and, you know, you get a cell or whatever, you get solitary confinement, they usually have a door, but these people were like, apparently placed in actual cages just out in the middle of the, the room or the... Yeah, mine apparently did that whatever. too. So it's just like, okay, just ultimate humiliation, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's fucked up. Um, so, how could any monster do this? But we've heard about prisoner experimentation. Um, oh, and in the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, a madman had apparently taken up shop already. His name was Walter Freeman. And in his life, he performed over 4,000 lobotomies and he saw the asylumum, asylumum. Mm. And he, 
and he saw the asylum as his own personal experimental training grounds for a Oh my god. No. Just um, no. So wrong. Terrible people. No, did you watch the like did you watch American Horror Story at all? Uh yeah, the first bunch of seasons, but not the last, I think two or three. <gasps> okay, I was gonna say I feel like I've watched at least the first one but what they said was um the season that's called american horror story asylum yeah. has um the character of what did i just say his name was this fucking oh walter freeman he's played apparently by james cromwell the actor so i guess that's totally based off this fucking lunatic that's giving all these lobotomies okay. and shit yeah i was like okay i kind of want to watch the season now i don't think i've seen that one <laughs> honestly every I, season of that show has so much promise by their like 50 billion sure. teaser videos that they release and then every season they somehow managed to ruin the whole premise of it for me I mean, maybe because they don't have to, like, continue a story with, like, the characters don't continue yeah. on season to season with their relationships, right? Yeah. That's my only thought, is that they don't have to, like, make it all make sense, because they're, like, it's not like Ross and Rachel are going to meet Chandler this season. They're like, that guy's dead five years ago. I don't know. They're like, they don't yeah. have to do any of that. I'd say but. like season two, which was Asylum, and then the yeah. um, one they did called Freak Show, which was like the circus, were like two right. of the biggest letdowns I for that me. One. I don't think but. I watched it, but I remember that one. Yeah, they were like the biggest letdowns. <laughs> yeah. Actually, like that I can remember. And I think I heard the same kind of thing about it, and I was like, eh. Yeah, I Asylum would probably have been, like, the best one if they didn't do, like, what they did to, like, explain everything in the end. They're like, oh, it's all happening because of this. And it was like, what the fuck? Oh, no. Yeah, it was just so <laughs> stupid. Sometimes I can get over that stuff. But let me tell you, watching things with Pat, sometimes he can't. I tell you, I, th I think I told you there was a few things where I'd be like, "What did this with Pat?" But he can't understand how that would happen, or the observers wouldn't have noticed this, or this, yeah. <laughs> you know, this um, loophole. He's really good at like piecing things together. Where I'm, I'm like, my memory is shit. Like you're trying to every time you learn a new piece of information, you're like, "How does this fit in with all the other episodes?" You know. <laughs> I, I noticed some stuff, but yeah. I'm so bad at it. So bad at it. <laughs> Anytime I see a thing that's like 70 things you or 70 like Easter eggs in this two minute trailer, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I just shit, watched though. it and was like, oh, cool. <laughs> like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, I don't know. Um. <laughs> shit, where did I leave off? Uh, the doctor yeah lobotomies probably because that's lobotomies <laughs> yeah. um oh yeah he was a big fan of lobotomies this this guy's name is walter don't even get me started anyway there is one thing when walter tries to give himself a lobotomy and i'm like stop i can't yeah look at you yeah Okay, so this uh, Walter apparently was a big fan of lobotomies and resulted in numerous deaths and lasting cognitive damages because, you know, did I read the ice pick method? Whatever. It's not great. I don't love it. <laughs> no. You put a thin pointed rod like an ice pick into the patient's eye socket and using a hammer to force it to sever it. The connective tissue in the brain's prefrontal cortex. It just usually makes people a lot dumber. And then, of course, they're not as violent because you've, like, 
severed half their brain. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> he apparently also did the lobotomy on Rosemary Kennedy. Have you heard of oh, okay. the Kennedy with the lobotomy? Uh, I listened to part of the like Bailey Sarian Dark History podcast where she talked about the Dang. dark or like it was like the secret Kennedy or something. Ooh, and it was yeah. About that. yeah, they definitely and, tried to keep her quiet. I would say yeah. so. It's not everywhere, but yeah. Like, I didn't catch a lot of it because honestly, I was kind of falling asleep in and out of sleep while I was listening to her talk about lobotomies. <laughs> oh my god, I can't! I can't! I will shut that shit off if that happens to me. Yeah. <laughs> that happened to me when I was watching the like video version of the lore podcast or whatever. Mm -hmm. Too much. <laughs> but yeah, it, it is really sad and she didn't get done right at all she did her wrong um yeah i guess just because from what i know rosemary had cognitive disabilities and they just like do a lobotomy about it and that didn't help of no. course yeah <laughs> and unsurprisingly once hearing you know the the history of this place the one part of the facility that was expanded over the years was the graveyard, which is Ooh. unfortunate, but true. And by necessity, um, patients were often kept in a constant catatonic state by drugging them, using insulin shock therapy to put them into, you know, like insulin comas and electroshock convulsive therapy. Just a bunch of fun stuff. <laughs> oh, that's awful. It's like, uh, no, no, thank you. The staff were not safe either. Arson was a common problem. So you got to watch out for that. <laughs> um, violent attacks and rape of female guards occurred. And a nurse went missing. And later her body was discovered at the bottom of an unused staircase. Just a very wow. dangerous place to, to work or be, unfortunately. Like, yeah, sounds like for patients and guards. Yeah, exactly. You're like, I just don't want to be in here. I think from what I read that patients could be left covered, you know, just to their own devices, covered in their own feces if no one came to, you know, clean them. And punishment included solitary confinement and being chained to the walls. Da, da, da. Yeah. You had that. That's our connection. Yeah. Which is gross. Oh my God. It seems like there was probably a lot of that going on at different places. Right. So apparently one man committed suicide in this place and wasn't found for over a week. Um, wow. <laughs> great. Oh, they also terrible. built a two <laughs> What's that? I said, oh, that's terrible. Oh, just lovely. Yeah. I know. I just I'm like, I have so many bullets. They're all awful. They built a tuber tuberculos tuberculosis tuberculosis tb ward in 1930 but the only other um part that got expanded during its long life uh was the graveyard of this big facility that was the only part that really got expanded from what i read was just it the graveyard. it's already a huge place um i did manage to throw some pictures up on the drive in your asylum um folder because it, it was a really big place too. Kind of yeah. like yours. It did look like it could be like a boarding school or something. Uh, workers don't always last long here as guards and staff. They just can't stand the noises and cold spots and stuff. They just quit. But the family who bought it has experienced activity pretty quickly and they didn't give it up. Um, they're named the Jordans and Rebecca Jordan, who I saw on the ghost 
Hunters episode. And I was like, oh, I read about you. But <laughs> um, she apparently felt a hand squeeze her shoulder when she was like giving a tour of the premises. So I was like, oh, that'd be not nice. <laughs> yeah, I would run out of there screaming. And over here we have a ah, ghost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, the most well-known of the resident ghosts, of which there are apparently eight, is Lily, a little girl who lived in the asylum. Um, I tried to upload a couple pictures that were like Lily's room, so you can okay. go to those. But she was either a patient herself, uh, maybe, or the daughter of an inmate. So people would come in with their children I guess if they had to as we'll get mm. to it's one of those places where you didn't have to be all that mentally deranged to be deemed fit to to come into the asylum yeah <laughs> yeah it's not great um oh apparently there was like a women's only ward kind of thing um and sometimes like when I watched there was a ghost adventures or a ghost hunters I should say episode where they went there and I dug out the DVD way out of my <laughs> wooden box and they went there and it was like um there's sometimes a man seen there in the place that's supposed to be completely for women when it was when they were alive mm -hmm. But yeah, you could apparently just look at someone wrong and get put in places like this because some patients were just in there for like medical predicaments, like asthma, which I have, <laughs> tuberculosis Jeez. or rabies. <laughs> I mean, rabies. Who doesn't have rabies? Um, <laughs> or other less tangible reasons like indigestion or political excitement. Okay. <laughs> and let's not forget other bizarre reasons used to lock people up in this age, like, oh, grief, congestion of the brain, feebleness of intellect, seduction, and novel reading. Reading no. books. I am fucking guilty. <laughs> um, yeah, I wrote, I'm screwed. I can't stop. Okay. <laughs> also, laziness, religious enthusiasm, menopause, superstition, domestic trouble, and masturbation. Makes you wonder who wasn't considered insane. <laughs> yeah. Come on, guys. We're gonna have some fun. But this little girl ghost, Lily, apparently hangs out on the fourth floor around ward four she might have been a patient or like a daughter of a patient some people think mm -hmm. because apparently there were women in there and kids and stuff um one story goes that her mother gladys was married to a soldier who abandoned her and she went man mad after bands of sadistic soldiers attacked her then discovered she was pregnant once admitted to the prison. Apparently, like, she might have been born in the prison is my understanding of that. <laughs> okay. But she apparently died of pneumonia at age nine, so, like, very young. Um, and the whole fourth floor that she likes to hang out in was burned by a fire set by an inmate in October 1935. So it's been burned all, all before. She haunted it before, she haunts it after. And there is a room known as Lily's room that has balls and toys just strewn about. And she will like interact with investigators here a lot, rolling balls and playing with the toys or maybe taking candy that's left to her. Oh, okay, that's why everything's out on the floor. I'm like, like, you know, like I see tiny dolls with like yes. arms and stuff. Yeah, I do have a picture of that one. It's just like toys everywhere, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And then on all the windowsills, they're just like sitting in rows. Yes. There was like actually multiple pictures, and I was like, I want this one. 
but anyway. <laughs> she is sometimes seen in a white dress and can turn on her music box. And another one of the main spirits is the kitchen ghost. People that go in that area feel dread and like someone is watching you. And one security guard saw a gray figure that glared at her before fading away. And the back room is a very sinister place where an inmate was definitely murdered. They tried to hang him with bed sheets, two of his co-inhabitants, I guess, inmates. They tried to hang him. Then when that didn't work, they put his head under the bed frame and jumped up and down on it until it touched the floor. So they oh just crushed his head. Wow, that's awful. Yay. And apparently his name was Dean. I don't hmm. know. If he's Winchester, they can always get back to life. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this prison has the women's auxiliary area that was built in 1890 to house the women on site. And you can now sometimes see a male figure there. I was watching the Ghost Hunters episodes of it and they were like, oh, they hear a man here sometimes, but they didn't see a whole t- lot exciting. Oh, okay. Um yeah, <laughs> I was like, eh. Um, one patient, a former boxer, was placed in an isolation cell with a metal door, and he had suffered head injuries in his athletic career that had left him pretty violent. But, excuse me, no one really expected when he started beating from the door of his cell and then ripped it clear off its hinges handed it calmly to a nurse and walked back to his regular cell and went in. <laughs> All right, then. No more. <laughs> I don't like this room. It's not an upgrade. I'm good. You got a cell for me? I will go back to that. <laughs> yeah. Um, dark shadows are seen, objects move on their own, cries of pain and terror and glass breaking occur. Ghosts can be anyone from Civil War era soldiers to staff to children and violent prisoners like murderers and rapists. Yay. Um, Ruth is a man-hating ghost who walks the Civil War wing throwing things at men like she did in life or pushes them up against the wall or sometimes they just hear whistling here. I can't whistle, must be fake. Um, But two more phantoms that we know about in this place are Big Jim and a nurse named Elizabeth. And the fourth floor also has an entity just known as the Creeper. It's a black mask, (laughs) yeah, that rolls broils along the floor and something here like to also bounce against bang against the wall um okay another fourth floor ghost is jacob a soldier who wanders the halls and noises are often heard in the electroshock room banging slamming throat throaty moans quote unquote heavy breathing and hysterical laughter okay hysterical laughter in the electric therapy room so fun honestly that's where i stopped it that's the end of my case it's not very rounded out Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> sounds pretty creepy and haunted though at least you're yeah. well, i guess i had one ghost with a name i had rebecca you had plenty of ghosts, though. I thought I had it written here, too, and I know at one point the owners, the daughter's name was Rebecca, because they said they bought it, and then I watched the ghost hunters, and then the person they talked to was Rebecca, and I was like, oh, I've heard of you. <laughs> yeah. It was like she was a celebrity. <laughs> oh, that's creepy. <sighs> I know. We're going to do, oh, we're going to do some cults after this one.
Yes. We're revisiting cults. But I'm excited. Some of them are fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, this time, I feel, well, the first time we both did kind of not, like, super insane, crazy cults. They were pretty uh, benign. Like, they honestly yeah. didn't have very many murders or anything between them. No, mine had <laughs> had some naked bombings. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there was some nudity. Um, and Pat was like, why aren't you going to cover one? There's one in BC. I'm like, no, I think I'm good. I think we have more Canadian cults than I thought we did. <laughs> Gross. Yeah. <laughs> but this time we're going for s- some of the wild ones. Uh, yeah. The murdering, crazy, fanatical, psycho ones. And there are some of those we... Yeah, we have lots to choose from. <laughs> I definitely stumbled mm-hmm. upon some murdering, crazy, fanatical people. Our favorite. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, well, catch you next week. <laughs> yes. Thanks for listening. <laughs> All right. Till next time. This has been Castles and Cryptids. You can listen to our podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Anchor, Breaker, Pocket Cast, and our YouTube channel. Please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Reddit. On our website, you can listen to all of our episodes as well as view pictures for each of our segments. Check out our Patreon page to view all of our tiers and become a Patreon supporter today to unlock monthly bonus episodes and behind-the-scenes content. We are working on an Ask Us Anything. You can submit questions by social media or by email at castlesencryptids at gmail.com. Do you have a spooky ghost story, a creepy cryptid sighting, or a thrilling true crime tale you would like to share and have us include in a future episode? Send us your listener story by social media or by email please include the name that you would like mentioned. Our music is by Kobe Fair. Our logo and artwork is by Antonio Garcia. Thanks for listening!